I want to be fair to Vox, but it really does seem like they wrote this article in a desperate plea to make it seem like universal basic income can work when it can't. Finland did a study. Well, we'll we'll, let's start with the title. Finland gave people free money. It didn't help them get jobs, but does that matter? Receiving a basic income had other great effects on the unemployed. For those that aren't familiar with what universal basic income is, it's that essentially taxpayer money is pooled and then everyone gets it broken down. So guaranteed no matter what. People, uh, you know, the, the amount you get varies depending on, you know, who you're talking to about it. It's, it's typically, we don't know how much money you should get. Some people say $1,000, some people say $500 per month. The point is, those who work more pay heavy taxes, and that money gets distributed amongst those who aren't working. In my opinion, it won't work. And I've been asked about it, so let, let me just explain why I think it wouldn't work. When I was younger, for instance, and, and again, this is going to be on my subject, based on my uh, subjective experiences, I used to skateboard all the time. I didn't want to go to work. I wanted to skateboard. I'm not the best skateboarder in the world. Admittedly, I'm pretty good. I've got some videos that have gone viral, some crazy things I've pulled off, but I'd probably never go pro. And it's not just that I wasn't good enough, but also I didn't care to be good enough. I just had fun skateboarding. What does that mean? If you gave me a basic income when I was, I don't know, 18, what would I do? I just skate and I'd do nothing else because I don't have to do anything else. And that means I wouldn't develop skills otherwise. One of the reasons I'm really good at talking is because I got a job at a nonprofit because I had to. Skateboarding was fun. Skateboarding didn't pay the bills. I got a job at a nonprofit that taught me how to be a better speaker from doing the job. I was fundraising. I was pitching. It was like sales. And I got really good at it really fast because I had to. And I enjoyed doing it to an extent. But given the opportunity, I would just go skateboard. So if, if you watch the Joe Rogan podcast, we talked about this. I said, I said to Joe, how many people do you know who are who want to be comedians, but are not funny. And he said, tons. And I said, now imagine you told them you can just do that. How many people would try and do jobs they're not good at? How many plumbers are at, would, would prefer to be a rock star, but they're not good at it? Okay. That's why I think we, we can't have a system that just gives money to people because eventually people, people who are working are going to be like, man, I'm paying these taxes. I'm losing more than I'm gaining from these taxes in the universal basic income. They're doing nothing. Screw it. I'm going to go paint. And then how many people would take up leisure activities? Now, there is an argument from some people who say, yes, but if you give the poor people, if the poorest people are being given universal income, they're less likely to commit crimes because basic necessities are being taken care of. I think that's true to an extent. However, I'd still argue a lot of crime is social status related, not economic. You know, sure, some people steal bread because they're hungry. Some people steal things or kill people because they want to be badass. Like I grew up in Chicago. Well, let's read the story. I want to criticize Vox here because it seems like this is a desperate attempt to save the idea. Preliminary results are in for Finland's landmark experiment with basic income. The idea that the government should give citizens a regular infusion of free cash with no strings attached. The outcome is not what Finland hoped it would be, but it's arguably a success anyway. No, it's arguably a a failure and you're desperately trying to make it seem like it was a success. success. The Finnish trial the results of which were released Friday, wasn't an experiment in universal basic income, which includes all citizens, whether they've got jobs or not. Rather, it was a targeted attempt to see what would happen if the government chose 2,000 unemployed citizens at random and gave them a check of 560 euros every month for two years. Participants were assured they'd keep receiving the money if they got a job. In fact, the experiment's stated goal was about promoting employment. The government wanted to see if having a basic income leads people to accept more work, even if it's a low paying, tempor- low paying or temporary. They said it wasn't an experiment on universal basic income, but the government wanted to see if basic income would lead to something. Yes, this was an experiment on universal basic income. Vox apparently just doesn't want to give up the idea for some reason, even when the data shows it doesn't work. Let's be honest, okay? I don't care which left, right, up, down, whatever. I don't care what's what you want to be true. I care about what will work, plain and simple. If you can show me data showing universal basic income works and I'm wrong, I'm absolutely interested in hearing it. And that's why a lot of, I don't have very strong opinions and that's why I'm rather centrist because I don't, because you can present an idea and someone can challenge it and you're like, hmm, we need more data. Universal basic income sounds fantastic. And I assure you when I was 19, I, I, I absolutely would have advocated for this idea. Yeah, then I could just play music and skate all day and get really good at what I want to do instead of having to work dumb jobs. Unfortunately, we don't need 10 million musicians. 
you know, we have hundreds of thousands. That's great. They can, if they can make a living, but we don't need everyone to be a musician or an actor or a skateboarder. We need people to do real jobs and not every real job is a fun job that people want. It's unfortunate. It really is, but I just don't see it working. And for some reason they want to keep, you know, twisting it in a way to make it sound like it would work. By that metric, the experiment was a failure. Receiving free money, free money, didn't impact the likelihood of people entering the workforce one way or another. Yes, it's as I explained. I'm not going to work at American Airlines. I worked at American Eagle Airlines for 10 bucks an hour. I'm not going to work there if I don't have to. I was making like, I was probably making less than a thousand bucks a month take home anyway. So I was like, you know, I, I was working full time. It was awful. That job sucked. I just want to go hang out with my friends and go skating. I wanted to go on adventures. You give me UBI, I stop working. Plain and simple. People need to load planes. So what ends up happening? If you want me to work for American Airlines and you're giving me a thousand bucks, well, 10 bucks an hour is not going to cut it because I don't need that. I don't need it. I can, I can pay for all the things I need. I can live in a studio apartment with, you know, with a bunch of other skateboarders paying 50 bucks a month to sleep in a closet, whatever. That's what we did. We were, that's all we wanted to do was skate. So what do they got to do? You now have to compete with basic income. All of these businesses are going to have to say, okay, we are now competing with the government in terms of paying people to make it worth their while. I'm not going to do work for 10 bucks an hour. Sorry. Oh, but what's that? You're going to offer 20 bucks an hour. Hmm. I could do a couple shifts at 20 bucks an hour to make a little bit extra money. That makes sense. That's not bad. You know, you get me over that hump. Well, what happens then? Well, the price of tickets for the airlines have to go up. The price of cheeseburgers at McDonald's are going to have to go up. And then eventually your universal basic income does, isn't worth anything. Because if McDonald's has to increase the cost of a cheeseburger to pay their staff enough to compete with basic income, all you've done is guaranteed rapid and massive inflation very quickly. It's not about money. It's about the value, value of time and resources. If everyone is guaranteed income, that money has literally no value. So it'll work for, in a short term, probably. Do it for a few months, everyone gets money. They'll spend it all, but eventually people, younger people, lower income people, they'll just be like, I'm, I'm not going to work at McDonald's anymore. I don't want to. So McDonald's increases the wages to try and get people to work there. And then they increase the price of their food. And then that thousand bucks a month you were getting can't buy you cheeseburgers anymore because the cost has, has gone up so much. That thousand bucks is worthless. Scarcity is important in how an economy can function. Unfortunately, I, 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 I want and encourage a post-scarcity world like Star Trek with replicators. But what do they talk about here? Their attitude is that here's what basic income did do. It made recipients feel happier and less stressed. The basic income recipients of the test group reported better well-being in every way than the comparison group, according to researcher, researcher Ali Kangas. That's a very positive result. And the fact that it wasn't what Finland was shooting for shouldn't be allowed to overshadow it. Yes, you can make people happy in the short term by giving them resources for free, I assure you. But over time, your system will collapse and then everyone will be upset. There is a, there, there's, there's probably a better way to quantify value, to compensate people for work. Absolutely. I, I'm really interested in seeing how blockchain evolves. But I just don't think the idea that everyone just gets a certain amount of resources is going to do anything because it diminishes the value of those resources, plain and simple. We need, we need market competition. One of the big problems with why things lose value, why jobs can't pay enough for, for a living wage is because of market saturation of low-skilled empl employees. More people are entering the world. You know, a lot of jobs being shipped overseas means middle-class jobs are going away. Then you have these middle-class people increasingly taking lower-tier jobs, pushing out the lower class and, the, and, and lower skilled, uh, less skilled workforce, increasing the competition for what few jobs there are, and that depresses wages. So it's tough. The system can't go on forever. Capitalism can't just continue unchecked forever. It can't. That's why I, I personally lean center left and I'm for a mixed economy. Eventually over time, people lose their jobs due to technological advancement. And eventually too many jobs are lost. People argue, sure, but there's jobs to be made in repairing machines. Sure, but the point is to reduce the workload. So a lot of people argue, okay, well, eventually, at some point, we need some kind of universal basic income. If all of the machines are going to be owned by corporations and, if, and one or two corporations, then eventually we need to guarantee that the people get their cut somehow. OK, but this doesn't make sense, at least not right now. Maybe it's possible in the future, but I think it's silly to continually try and say, but at least everybody was happy for a little while. These people had a, had a really good time. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't doubt that. I can give money to some random kid and have a good time with it. He's not going to better himself, not going to get a job if someone's just giving him money to do whatever he wants. 
and hardship, suffering. These are things that you experience in life. I think, you know, we typically want to reduce suffering, but at the same time, we must recognize it is a part of the human experience. It is a part of life. You become stronger when you deal with hardship. We can't just keep taking away everything difficult. We want to get rid of the things that, you know, we want to keep people safe. We want to keep people alive. We want, we want to protect our children. We want to protect those that are weak. But we have to recognize that to some degree, you need people to become strengthened by some hardship. And universal basic income is a pie in the, pie in the sky solution, in my opinion. So you know what? Hold on. I'm going to stop because I don't want to rant too much. I could be wrong. Absolutely comment below and let me know what you think I'm getting wrong. But I just don't see it. Maybe in the future with new technology, maybe once we develop replicators, it won't matter. But the problem is going to arise when you have a class of people who do trash jobs for a ton of money, New York's digital media class. They write articles about Brad Pitt's junk and get paid forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year to do it. And then you got people working in steel mills getting paid 15, 20 bucks an hour. Well, I don't know how much you get paid in a steel mill, but you've got people working at airports for 10 bucks an hour wondering, why am I getting paid trash when that person just looks at a picture of Brad Pitt and writes a story about it and they get paid more than me? Double, right? I just don't think it's going to work. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. But anyway, you comment, let me know what you think. I got more videos coming up in a few minutes. I'll see you then.